Good morning everyone, I'm George, Digital Consultant at Digital CDL, and I welcome you to this second lesson of the second chapter of the course. While Europe was experiencing the emergence of Fail and Weber's theories, the US saw another engineer, Frederick Taylor, introducing the concept of scientific management. This would soon become foundational to organizational and industrial structure. Excited by the possibilities presented by the novel mechanical technologies, Taylor aligned himself with Smith, interpreting the Second Industrial Revolution. He suggested the application of scientific and experimental methods used in machine design to management and organization. After years as a laborer, Taylor, now a consultant in organization and management, formulated his theories. He observed tasks and then experimented with new practices, always emphasizing work specialization, new tool implementation, and meticulous performance measurement. Taylor's scientific management is based on four principles. Substitute traditional work methods, which rely on experience and common sense, with those founded on a systematic and scientific task analysis. Choose and hone workers based on their unique skills, assigning them to roles that best fit their abilities. But give each worker comprehensive instructions and supervision to enhance their productivity. For segment tasks, not only horizontally but also vertically, distinguishing management's planning and supervisory duties from the tasks performed by the workers. Applying these principles systematically, along with the smart use of technologies, can significantly boost productivity, benefiting both companies and their employees. A case in point is Taylor's stint at the Bethlehem Steel Corporation. By applying scientific work organization principles and innovative tools to shoveling, he nearly tripled productivity. A nearby steel mill, noticing the efficiency of these workers, offered them $4.9 slash ton, up from the $3.2 slash ton Bethlehem paid. Despite the higher offer, all the workers returned to their previous jobs within six weeks. The competitors' conventional team structure didn't allow them to earn as much as they did at Bethlehem individually. For Taylor, work organization transformed into an empirical science, a systematic managerial consultancy activity, and a wellspring of innovation. The ideas that later inspired Henry Ford to establish the first assembly line can be attributed to Taylor. This not only revolutionized the auto industry, but also the global economy. Ford once worked as an engineer at the Thomas Edison Electric Company, which supported his endeavors with the internal combustion car prototype he had designed at home. In 1902, he established the Ford Motor Company. By 1908, while embracing scientific management principles, he introduced the first Ford Model T. This car was groundbreaking not just for its straightforward design and standardization, but more so for its highly industrialized production process, where the assembly line was incorporated. This production method was inspired by what Ford had observed in Detroit's slaughterhouses. The Model T, or Lizzie, as it was affectionately termed in the U.S., was manufactured for 19 years, with 17 million units sold, redefining car perception. In 1908, over 10,000 Ford Model TS were sold at $825 each. By 1912, the price had dropped to $575, making it the first time a car's price was less than its maker's average yearly salary. In 1914, Ford produced more than 260,000 Model TS with 13,000 workers. In contrast, the rest of the industry collectively made 287,000 cars with 66,000 workers. Between 1908 and 1916, Ford managed to cut prices by 58%. Concurrently, he introduced a daily wage of $5, which was double the industry's standard rate. For the first time, factory workers could afford to buy a car transitioning it from luxury good to a mass-market product accessible to most families in the U.S. and other industrialized nations. At the core of this shift was the profound capability of technology and work organization to amplify productivity. 
in 1910, before the assembly line, 2,773 workers produced 18,664 cars, translating to 6.73 cars per worker. By 1914, after introducing the assembly line, 12,880 workers made 248,307 cars, which equals 19.28 cars per worker. Production times for the flywheel magnet decreased from 20 minutes using traditional methods to 13 minutes with the push chain and finally to 5 minutes with the mechanized chain. With the assembly line's introduction, the Ford T's production time reduced from 12 hours and 8 minutes to 2 hours and 35 minutes, eventually dropping to 1 hour and 33 minutes at the Highland Park facility. Fordism, driven by a robust societal vision, truly revolutionized production and work organization methods. This revolution, which fully realized the ideas of classic organizational thinkers and tailored scientific management, marked the definitive shift into the industrial age. This approach is anchored in the firm belief that a resilient organization should be viewed as a mechanism, unaffected by individual changes. The principles of specialization from Smith, hierarchy from Fayol, and formalization from Weber collectively form the bedrock of a precise and objective organizational perspective, often termed the mechanistic model of organization. Thanks for watching. See you next week for lesson three.